it's very hard if you happen to be psychic and tune into the spiritual realm. So I'd like to give you my thoughts on it. On the lightness of the she, theologians are so heavy, patriarchal druids, some of them, are so pompous, the doctrinal dreariness of occultists can get one down. I've long been bored stiff by harangues from masters of what? Wisdom, of course. For a thousand years or more, we women have provided congregations for men, holding forth on our motherhood, capital M, our marriages, our children, our destiny in the next world, either hell or heaven, according to their own prescription. The great clan of Dana is one of my helps anyway. We founded it to have a happy, easy sphere for people to be their true selves, uninhibited by logic, facts, dogmas, criticisms, facts so-called facts. Remember our theologians for centuries taught the fact that the sun went round the earth and burnt those who disagreed with them. Scientists created nuclear bombs to benefit their countries. They haven't. So when we describe personal encounters with deities, angels, she, fairies, animal spirits, we need to put aside prejudice, fear, dislike and scientific opinion. Note that when alive we are at least respected by materialists as being materially there. The moment we die we are non-persons with no rights, privilege or respect. We are prey to being exorcised by the clergy, banished by esotericists and ignored by the majority of the educated world. Yes, I will be honest and tell of my own few encounters with fairies and animal spirits. I shall present an elf, a triton, and talking squirrel field mice. The elf I met in full consciousness when I was projected out of my body at night. Here I must emphasize that fairy folk exist on a higher frequency than we do. There is a feeling of the speed you notice in early films, and more so with the deities, spirits of light. This elf was friendly and had come to help me back to my body. He was about three feet tall and was supernaturally thin, but what struck me most was his hair. He had very long, thin pigtail that reached to his knees like a fine rope. Some years later, I was describing him to a fairy contactee. To my delight, this lady had also seen an elf with hair a plait just like that. Oddly, some months later, I saw a young man with his hair braided in like fashion. But who started the fashion, elf or human? The triton I met looked like those green renaissance sculptured tritons depicted with ornamental fountains. He was very large green, no resemblance to a human. He looked like a kind of undersea scaly fish with intelligence. I was aware of the extraordinary speed of the dimension in which he existed. He manifested in a rushing stream. I liked him. The most extraordinary creatures I have met were red squirrel cum field mice animals in my bedroom when I was out of my body at night. What was so unusual was that they had human-like intelligence. They really were and could therefore talk with me. They had come to help me back to my body again. At that time, I still had embarrassment at conversing with intelligent animal spirits, so I was immensely relieved and reassured by my friend, a priest of Isis. He'd called in from court, and we were having tea. He suddenly said, A strange thing's happened to me yesterday, Olivia. I saw these squirrel-like creatures, spirits, and they could talk. Thank you, thank you, I exclaimed. Well, I hope this will give some people courage to come forward when they do see things. I've yet to tell of the white rabbit, Passicola the trickster, and how I met him as did Alice in Wonderland. Yes, and that's true.